Hi, Calvary kids. We're so glad that you're here with us today. I hope you're having a great summer and enjoying the beautiful weather that we're having. Come along with us now and find out what the Bible story is all about this week. about playing I Spy that she got some I Spy books out of the library for me. These books are filled with all kinds of things that God made. Let's try this one first. I Spy with my little eye. Something that God made that is red and juicy and starts with an S. Shout it out if you know. Yes, you're right. S is for strawberry. Can you pretend to eat a yummy strawberry? Pop it in your mouth. Now chew it up. That was mm -mm -mm good. Let's try another one. I spy with my little eye. Something that God made. That giggles and cries and sometimes smells. And starts with a B. Shout it out if you know. Yes, you're right. B's for baby. 
Do you have a baby brother or sister? Babies are pretty awesome. Pretend to cry like a baby with me. Wah! Wah! Okay, now show me your happy face again. Good job! And this one is full of animals that God made. Who? Who? Hey, it's Ollie. Hello, Manny. Who? Who? Spying animals, are you? Hi, Ollie. Sure am. Hey, you're an owl. Maybe you're in my animal book. I love spying all the things that God made. God made the world as a gift for you. And he gave something even more special. It's true. So let's hear this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through. Who? I've got a Bible story for me and you. <gasps> well, hello, everyone. I'm Aisha, and welcome to my cupcake food truck. Check out today's special. <laughs> I made I Spy Cupcakes in honor of the game we're playing. I can't wait to tell you today's true story from the Bible. It is so good. <laughs> if you're ready for a story, on the count of three, y'all tell me a story. One, two, three. Tell me a story. <laughs> Our story is about a man named Paul. Paul believed in Jesus. He told everyone that Jesus is alive and wants to be their friend forever. One day, Paul went to a city called Athens. The people in Athens worshiped statues made of stone instead of believing in Jesus. Do you see a city? Help me look for it. I spy with my little eye a city. Paul looked around at all of the statues and he told the people, hey, you have a lot of statues, but you're missing something. You're not worshiping the one true God, the God who made everything. The people wanted Paul to tell them more. So he did. He told them how God made the whole world and everything in it. Do you see the world God made? Look with me. I spy with my little eye the world. God made the world and everything in it, Paul said. He made the sky, water, moon, stars, sun, trees, flowers, birds, fish, animals. God made all of it. <laughs> the people were amazed and wanted Paul to tell them more. So he did. <laughs> Next, Paul told them how God made people. He told them how God made all people to know him. Do you see people? Look with me. I spy with my little eye. People! The people still wanted Paul to tell them more, so he did. Next, Paul told the people about Jesus. He told them that Jesus is God's son. Jesus is alive and wants to be their friend forever. When Paul was finished talking, some of the people believed in Jesus. It was amazing! The good news is everyone can believe in Jesus. That means you can believe in Jesus too. Did you like the story? If you did, give it two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. <laughs> hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who can believe in Jesus? I can believe in Jesus. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who can believe in Jesus? I can believe in Jesus. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. See you next time. Bye. So there's your story, and it's all true. God made the whole world for us, and then gave us Jesus too. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? Wow, I love that Paul told all the people that God made everything and that he sent Jesus to be our friend forever. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you can say got it, get it? Good! I'm going to spy more things that God made. See you guys next time. Bye! I spy my little eye.
These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. John 20, 31. Hey, Calvary kids, welcome to another edition of our game show. And today, everyone gets to play. If your family is interested in playing one of our games, feel free to email me at the email address listed here, and we'll get you signed up for a future week. Charles campus and I teach in the elementary room and this is Bert and he loves to go on hikes and camping trips and some of the things that he likes is broccoli. You know your broccoli? And this is his favorite toy that he likes to play with and he also loves Cheerios. Good boy. Sorry. And he knows touch. Good boy. Here you go. Hey Calvary Kids, we are here with Jessica from Big Creek. Hey Jessica. Hey. My name is Jessica Gross and I am the Children's Ministry Director at the Big Creek Campus. And you guys have been going to Big Creek for a while, right? Ooh, yeah, almost 19 years. <laughs> okay, I didn't even realize it was that long. So tell me a little bit about your family. Um, so there are four of us, oh, well, there's four kids. Um, Kyla, she is 15, almost 16. Savannah is 13. Isaiah is eight. Lindsay is six. And Tyler and I have been married for almost 19 years. Wow. 
Wow. So you've been pretty much born to Big Creek since you guys got married. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, so I heard you guys just bought a travel trailer. Yes, we did. <laughs> so where? So have you been anywhere? You've been on a couple trips, right? Little trips around? Yeah, we also went to Arkansas. But the biggest one we're going to be on is the one we're going to take in August. Um, we are going to go up to South Dakota for four days and then we're gonna jump over to uh, Wyoming and go to Yellowstone and stuff for a couple of days and then come home. So what is the most fun thing you guys have done while you're in quarantine? Um, honestly, buying the camper. Cause it was like, I think we bought that late April and we took our first trip in May, so. Yeah, I think everyone wanted a camper or a swimming pool while <laughs> being quarantined. Or a bike. <laughs> or a bike. I, I bought a bike too, yeah. Um, what is your favorite Disney movie? Honestly, I don't know if it's a Disney movie, but my favorite is Princess and the Frog. I love the storyline behind that movie. I heard you have a weird talent that you went to school for. Tell us about what you went to school for. <laughs> okay, so in high school, uh, my junior and senior year, I went to school to do small engine repair. So I have a certificate for that. So it was essentially like large lawnmowers and small ATVs. So my lawnmower breaks, they call you? Is that how this works? You can. <laughs> there you go. You heard it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what is your dream country to visit? Oh, that's a big one. My husband and I actually discussed possibly going to Italy because that's a lot of my heritage. I have a lot of Italian in me, so yeah. The best question would be, what would you eat first in Italy? I don't know. I'd have to really look into a lot of what the culture is because we have such Americanized Italian food here. And that's what I've grown up on, aside from my grandma's cannolis, which are an authentic actual recipe so yeah yeah i might go cannolis first you know <laughs> <laughs> did it hard <laughs> all the <time. laughs> uh, what is your favorite board game um i'm gonna go against everybody's norm and say monopoly <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yes yeah, board game that starts wars among family right how would you describe yourself in three words so loyal um punctual i hate being late um and I would say friendly. So if you had a superpower, what would that superpower be? Honestly, I would say to be invisible because there are so many different times I've been in conversations where people were like, if you could only be a fly on the wall, I'm just like, okay, so if I could be invisible, I could relate. <laughs> if you were stuck on an island and you could only have one food forever, what would that food be? I would say ice cream, as long as the flavor can rotate. If we're only talking about a food and not a flavor. <laughs> What is your favorite flavor of ice cream? I would say mint chocolate chip. Mm, that is tasty. What is your favorite smell? Roses. How did you and your husband meet? Uh, so the first time we ever met in person, I was actually changing the oil on my truck. <laughs> you are the person I'm going to call, I'm telling you. <laughs> if you could visit any place in the United States, where would that be? I would say Hawaii. Hawaii, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've not been there yet. All right, thanks, Jessica, for uh, talking with us today, and we look forward to seeing you at Big Creek. Thank you. Bye.
To another week in the STEAM Lab! Whenever you're learning new things, experimenting, inventing, or anything else one might do in a lab, you need to make sure you have faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And you also have to have something to work with. Today, I asked a few people to let me borrow their glasses for the day. Cheers! Just kidding! Eye glasses, not water glasses. <laughs> I see you. Uh, uh. Okay, these are reading glasses. They're supposed to help you see things better close up. Let's see. Oh, wow. Yep, they really work. I see things a lot more clearly. It's like, it's like, it's like focused, blurry. Focus, blurry. But look what happens when I put on these glasses. They're for someone who is really farsighted. Wow! I can't see anything. I can't see anything. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like blurry, blurry. Focus, focus. Blurry, blurry. Focus. Isn't that wild? There are a lot of different kinds of glasses. And the reason is because there are a lot of different kinds of people. Not everyone sees the same way. And today's story is about when a guy named Paul met some people who saw things a little bit differently than he did. Go see for yourself. You, you, see, what I, you see what I did there? Ah. Okay. Meanwhile, I've got some more glasses to try on. Whoa. <gasps> These are X-ray glasses. I can see my bones! Just kidding. <laughs> Seriously though, when did I get that freckle? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 16 through 34. Wherever Paul went, he boldly preached the good news of Jesus. This Jesus I'm telling you about is the Messiah. Many Jews and Greeks believed in Jesus, but in nearly every town, a group of Jews would gather to oppose Paul. 
He and his companions were forced out of Thessalonica, and then later that same group of Jews followed to run Paul out of Berea. Eventually, the believers helped Paul escape to the coast, where he could travel by boat to Athens. Tell Silas and Timothy to join me as soon as they can. Once Paul reached Athens, he walked the streets of the ancient city, disturbed by what he saw, carved and molded statues everywhere. Statues of their gods. The people really believe false gods can help them. In fact, the Athenians believed in around 30,000 false gods. Yeah, they believed these gods were in charge of everything from uh, sports to sleep to doors and cleanliness. A god of grapes. Okay. While Paul waited for his friends, he visited the Jewish synagogue to tell Jews and Greeks alike about Jesus. And in the marketplace, he spoke to anybody who would listen. You have to hear about Jesus. He was killed, but he came back to life. Paul's words stirred up a group of Athenian thinkers. These men felt that they could uh, achieve perfection through knowledge and wisdom. Can you explain what this fellow is chattering about? He seems to be telling us about gods we've never heard of. We shall take this Paul to a meeting of the Areopagus. There, we shall reason it out. Set high on an outcropping of rock, the Areopagus was the high court of Athens. And from this viewpoint, Paul could see all of Athens spread out below him. Closer at hand, the gathered Epicureans and Stoics studied Paul. What is this new teaching you're giving us? You have some strange ideas we've never heard before. Hmm, we would like to know what they mean. <sighs> Paul took a deep breath. These people treated new ideas like playthings, so he wanted to connect the story of Jesus with something they already knew. People of Athens, I see that you are very religious in every way. We are aware of this, please proceed. Paul recalled a small carved altar he had discovered while exploring the city. As I walked around, I looked carefully at the things you worship. I even found an altar with to an unknown God written on it. Now, I'm going to tell you about this unknown God. Paul explained to them that the true God created the entire world and everything in it. He created each individual person with a purpose and an adventure to live. He did it so that people would seek him and find him, even though he is not far from any of us. Preposterous. Continue. Paul knew that these Athenians might listen to the words of their own writers that might actually reflect something of who God is. In him we live and move and exist. As some of your own poets have also said, we are his children. Uh, an, an interesting point. Paul told them that people are God's children. God is alive and real, not some carved statue or molded from gold. And now by sending Jesus, God was telling everyone everywhere to turn away from the bad things they've done and to follow him. God has proved this to everyone by raising Jesus from the dead. Preposterous! Fascinating. More like fantasy. Get this joker out of here. No, 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 no. This is new. Uh, fresh. We will hear you speak about this again sometime. A man called Dionysius had been among the crowd at the Areopagus. He hurried to catch up as Paul left. I want to know more about this living God. About Jesus. I can help you, friend. So Paul continued to spread the good news and love of Jesus, and after a short time, Dionysius became a follower of Jesus, as well as a woman named Damaris, and several others. I know it's a banana, but it just looks like a blurry yellow blob. Whoa! It's hard to focus when you can't see clearly. But I think it's important to try and see things from another person's point of view, like Paul and the people in Athens. They believed in different gods than Paul. That's why Paul tried to see things how they saw things. 
so he could tell them about Jesus in a way they'd understand. He told them about the living one true God who created the whole world and everything in it. And he told them that God proved how powerful he was by bringing a man back from the dead. That man was God's son, Jesus. Many of the people from Athens had never heard of anything like that before. Some thought Paul was kind of crazy, but others wanted to hear more. And Paul was able to help them know Jesus the way he knew Jesus. That's something we can do too. It's the one thing to remember today. You can help others know Jesus. That can be easy if you're talking to someone who sees things the same way you do. But when someone sees things differently, when they believe differently, or when they've had different experiences than you, it helps to try and see things from their point of view. Oh, yes, I see what you're saying now. The best thing to do is to try to keep it real. Be honest about what Jesus has done for you. And it's not just in what you say. You can help people know Jesus by what you do too. When you treat people with love, respect, and kindness, they can see the love of Jesus through you. Everyone's different, and we all see things just a little bit differently. So I think it makes sense to try to see things the way other people see them. And you don't even have to change your glasses to do it. I'll see you next time. Bye. See you guys later. Oh, hold on. Uh, oh, that's a table. All right.